Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat Podcast Show, and this is a special series during this COVID crisis where we'll be sharing the learnings, best practices, and failures and successes of all the channel leaders throughout the tech industry. So sit back, listen, and enjoy. How do you think people that have got distractions at home, obviously kids and partners or dogs or whatever it is, how can they try and make sure they actually do focus on work? Because you're right, there's a lot of people that maybe thought this might be an excuse to just sort of sit in the sun and sunbathe or, or do whatever, but you actually have to, do, you have to do work when you're at home, haven't you? <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think there's so many different distractions. I mean, if you've got children, I've got children, um, and, uh, you know, sometimes that, be, uh, that can be, Come really difficult. Um, uh, often, when you're on calls or video conferences, and uh, you know they're just walking behind you. Or uh, <laughs> I've also got a cat and two dogs as well, which are really boisterous. Um, oh, I, I tend to make sure that they're outside in the garden uh, or uh, they're kept away. I mean, y- you can't help but um, it, you know just embrace that when people are at home that there's always going to be some kind of commotion in the background because that you know you're you're mixing work with people's personal lives in their personal space um but what what i would say to people is that when you're working from home you know just try um try and assume that it's no different than being at work um you know try and get your head down keep it's that self-motivation which is often difficult for people i think um what we've tried to do is we've been having daily calls with uh, our people, um, making sure that they're, you know, online, making sure that they've got access to any tools that they uh, really need in order to do their roles. Uh, we're also making sure that from a mental and well-being perspective that, you know, they're being looked after. So if they have any concerns, queries, <clears throat> if they're finding it really difficult to uh, work from home or they're finding it challenging because um, it is it, it it can be fairly daunting for those people who tend to work from uh, the office and never had the opportunity to work from home to kind of think that you know I'll get up at five to nine in the morning and you know I'll go and take a, a mid-afternoon nap uh, or something yeah. like that or you know let me go to the store and do some shopping but you know what what people need to realize is that they're actually being paid to to do their jobs and i i don't think we've had any concerns with any of our stuff because people have always worked remotely in uh this organization but also in in any other organization that i've worked for and we've embraced home working we've embraced people having the flexibility um to be able to you know either work from home or work in uh, a shared office space or, or you know um just be out and about I mean, you know we we yeah. want our account managers for instance to be in front of customers as much as possible um it is difficult there there are a lot of people that i've spoken to certainly over the last couple of weeks that have found it really really challenging um uh, just because it's not the norm but um i think now people are realizing that homeworking is doable it's um it makes it a lot easier for them to interact with people when they have the right technology in front of them uh technology has certainly changed over the last few years to allow people to uh, become more vocal and uh, to be able to interact with people through voice video uh, and various other methods um and you know I, i always tell my staff that think of it as social media uh, you know, you speak to your friends in an evening and uh, nine times out of ten, you're either FaceTiming people or you're uh, working on Messenger uh, with people, um, video calling family from around the globe. This is no different, um, but you do have a task in hand. You are you do have a role and responsibility uh, to your employer to make sure that when you are working, you're online and, uh, you know, you're accessible to the business. Yeah. Do you think, obviously, from your experience of managing and recruiting all those people at PCM and you know the changes and different um, different working environments and different people coming in to now managing a, a, a smaller team do you think this the, the fundamentals are still the same of how you're actually sort of managing and motivating and, and collaborating with those guys because you weren't you, you know being in Sheffield you weren't always in the room with them were you yeah yeah so 
I, to be honest, I think it's exactly the same. It's really down to uh, individual management styles. Um, I've always managed people in a certain way, um, you know, where I treat them as adults. But, you know, we're not in a school play playground. Um, we, uh, you know, make sure that the employees uh, are given the respect from day one and, uh, you know, uh, given their tenureship within the industry, their experience, or even if they're not experienced, being able to help and mold them to to become uh, uh, experienced and talented uh, individuals. So I don't think that anything has changed in the way that I've personally managed people uh, in the past, mm -hmm. whether it be from uh, PCM or uh, any other or uh, organizations. Um, the dynamics are slightly different obviously you know we're not as uh, large as the previous organization but we're in startup mode and you know when i set up the organization for pcm we were in startup mode then uh, too i only had a very small team and um you know you you bring on the best of the best and uh, you know you mold them you understand what their needs and requirements are uh, you look at um you know what their aspirations for growth are you put in development plans um you help and support them as much as possible um so i think there's no real change uh, to what we're doing i think the only slight difference is is that we're all on lockdown right now um when i first set up the previous organization we were still working from home uh, a lot of the time before we went into our first regis facility um, uh, it took us probably the first three months of setup before we actually got our own premises. Uh, that was at Pinfold Street in Sheffield, uh, and at which time we had six employees who ended up joining us. So there, there was a team of seven. Uh, right now, we're in the same position. We're a team of seven. Um, we went into our office space at the beginning of March, and uh, and although uh, you know this has meant that we're working remotely. Um, because we're using technology to speak to people every single day, I don't see it as being very different. Uh, at PCM, I did travel quite extensively. And uh, I think because we embrace technology and we utilize the tools that were in front of us, I was always very close to my team. Uh, whether I was in the US or whether I was traveling all around the UK, I was always on the phone. So that's probably why it's really difficult for you to get hold of me. Uh, yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> as you can probably attest to, um, I, I like to keep in close communication with uh, all of my staff uh, just to make sure that, you know, we're running the business in the right manner. But uh, at the same time, we're also taking care of um, uh, any needs that they have so that we can support them. Do you think there seems to be an uplifting communication from partners out there, you know, obviously educating their clients from home from work solutions or doing webinars or really rapid communications out there more into the market, which probably they should have been doing anyway. I'm yeah. thinking. Well, why, why do you think that is? And why, why do you think they've now just sort of, is it because they've been forced to sort of jump on the bandwagon with sort of like getting out this, you know, information about home, home working from home or, or is it, or is it something else? I mean, home working isn't a new concept, as I mentioned earlier. It's, uh, I, I think it's more of a necessity nowadays. And, uh, I've certainly seen, like you've seen and just mentioned, that there's been a huge increase in people communicating that home working is, um, you know, kind of, um, I would say, uh, their strength. Um, and, <laughs> uh, you know, in, in many instances, a lot of these organizations that have maybe been promoting other types of services or technologies, uh, their primary focus right now uh, in order to uh, obtain probably market share or incremental business is by stating that they are a um, an organization that embraces home working they embrace uh, the technology that's out there they're promoting their own technology they're promoting their own services in order to allow uh, for people to see that they are demonstrating uh, that home working is um, is easily accessible uh, these are all things that have been in place for many many years and I do genuinely believe that the reason why people are probably communicating that more and more is i mean there's probably a number of reasons but i i would say the primary reason is because they want to be at the forefront of the customer mind that you know they are a go-to organization to help them with their immediate needs right now uh during this pandemic um 
not that they are the best at providing that solution, but certainly that they have the capability, um, even though they may not have um, promoted that over the last six to 12 months or indeed ever. Um, so it, it's really difficult to say, but I would say that, you know, people are a bit cautious about what the market is going to be doing. Um, and I think it's a way of being able to try and grab whatever market share that they can uh, to help customers on their journey for digital transformation or home working what, or whatever, um, just to stay relevant within the industry at that time. So, Do you think, Donovan, that the communication style from resellers or, or any channel partner will change after this pandemic is over? And what I mean by that is, obviously, everyone wants to go and see a customer face to face. Yeah. The second best communication is what we're doing now. And yet, most people, most partners, most channel partners would default to email and just sending an email to the, to, to the client or the customer and hoping for something back. Do you, think we'll start, you, you just, do you think we'll start using this video technology even more and more now? Uh, I think so. I think that given that a lot of organizations have invested in this technology, um, I can probably see a number of changes uh, in the way that organizations uh, work following um, you know, a, a positive exit from this uh, pandemic. Uh, I definitely believe that organizations will promote more homeworking uh, if they see that this has been a positive impact to their organization. I do think that, uh, you know, more people will converse via video. Um, that's yeah. for certain. Uh, a lot of my meetings, a lot of the calls that I have uh, with customers are done via video. Um, even net new customers. Um, uh, we've tried it out with uh, a number of net new clients and, uh, you know, uh, they're embracing the ability of using the technology that they've invested in and uh, wanting to do video. Uh, we had a client who actually reached out to us and they set up a meeting and they made sure that they had the Zoom link, um, uh, you know, as part of that. And your first interaction with the customer is via video. Yeah. That is something that I think people are going to be embracing more of in the channel um, uh, for many years to come. I think it's um, going to help in order to reduce travel. I think it would save customers a lot of money. I think they see the value in having that face-to-face -face contact. Uh, I also believe that the reason why a lot of people are also using video right now uh, is probably because you know they're quite isolated in their own environment. So actually physically going out there and being able to see people or speak to people face to face um, yeah. uh, it, it is a bonus really. So um, I, I do think that the channel uh, will probably change in terms of the habits of the old school cold calling and um, you know having physical meetings on site. I think people will become um, more virtual based yeah, in absolutely. many instances. Absolutely. And in general, Donovan, how's it going for you guys? How's it obviously in this market, you know, yeah. UK sort of startup really, haven't you got? So is it is it challenging? Uh, I would say that for uh, any organization that says that it isn't challenging, um, it's probably lying. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, you can only look at the stock market to say that. But what I will say is that uh, we're in our infancy of our growth. We uh, are continuing to grow. In fact, uh, you know, March was our first month of trading. And uh, considering what we did within March from both the revenue and also profitability standpoint, um, we're in really, really good shape. And we're really excited for the future. Uh, yeah. We're building a very credible pipeline. Um, I, I think that being a smaller organization um, allows us to have that agility uh, to be able to take on net new customers. Customers are more open to looking at alternate suppliers right now. And uh, you've probably seen that or had that feedback from uh, yeah. other people because uh, stock is so low. Uh, you know, there's a lot of disruption within distribution, a lot of disruption within the uh, manufacturer supply chain that customers um, or certain customers are not as loyal to their existing incumbents um, that you would probably anticipate. And I think that because we're a, a much smaller company, we've been able to navigate a lot, uh, well, without a lot of red tape, uh, is what I would say, 
to be able to serve its customers and make sure that they're getting an excellent level of service. So uh, we also, I mean, j just coming back to uh, Paragon Micro as an organization, we've actually been doing business in the UK for over 10 years. Uh, we've been utilizing partners for a, a very, very long time in order to service some of our existing global customers. The whole requirement of us coming into the UK and setting up our uh, footprint to be able to service um, both net new customers, but also our existing customers uh, is more of a necessity than, uh, you know, a aspiration to just end up in the UK and, uh, you know, uh, go out there and take as much market share as we possibly can. Uh, our customers kind of expect that we have an international presence to be able to service them directly on our own paper. And we've seen a lot of those existing customers who uh, have a very good level of service from uh, our teams within the US approach us since we set up the UK and since we actually advised the market that we were coming into the UK so that they could be part of that journey. Now, the great thing for those customers is that they have the ability to be able to help us mold our own strategy as well. Um, that is uniquely there to be able to support that particular customer or those customers. Um, we're listening to what our customers needs and requirements are and then we're evolving the strategy that we've created as part of our growth. We're not ramping up as quickly as uh, I probably did where within PCM in terms of uh, our hiring effort. There's a number of reasons for that. Um, we're keeping a lot of our uh, costs lower uh, within the organization uh, so that we can hit that profitability line a lot quicker but we're hiring best of breed talent within the industry so uh, we want a team of very strong individuals that are very customer focused very um, you know committed to delivering excellent levels of service and with that being said we grew the US organization very very quickly just because of the service that we provided and we're a fairly small team within the US. Um, we don't have hundreds and hundreds of account managers. We have a smaller number of account managers that are hugely profitable because of how they manage their customers and because of us having the ability as a private organization to be as nimble and flexible as possible to service them. So it is slightly different to uh, the setup that we had uh, at a previous organization. Yeah, okay. Okay. Um... And my last question, Donovan, I mean, going back to sort of home working. So my last question, there'll be a lot of people out there sort of fearing what's going to happen and not sure if they're going to be stuck from home from working for weeks and weeks or months and months and not sure how they can adjust to actually home working. Now, you've had a lot of experience of home working because you've done it for yeah. years and, you, and you, you've worked in different locations. How do you think or what tips could you give to people that are, that are, that are struggling to deal with actually the homework and from a mental point of view but also from an actual capacity of work point of view what tips would they do to actually embrace it and actually start start getting actually the output they want out there um it's a, a difficult question to answer actually i think it's really down to self-motivation um that you know in a lot of instances uh, people will naturally find it really difficult um to um to isolate themselves away from people uh, as humans, we are naturally inquisitive um, and we are, uh, I would say, a herding breed. We like to be around other people. We like to socialize. Um, I, I think it's really down to the individual. What I would tend to say to people who have not worked within a, um, a home environment before is, you know, just keep an open mind. Uh, you may have a lot of distractions around you. Um, but at the end of the day, you do have a role, uh, you know, you have a purpose within an organization to be able to, um, like, you know, to continue doing your work with a benefit of being around your family, around your pets, uh, you know. So it's very easy to fall into a trap of maybe nipping out and doing, you know, the garden or maybe nipping out and doing some a spot of shopping, etc. I would say, you know, as long as you are doing what you need to do as an individual within your role, your capabilities, um, you know, then having flexible working is something that should be embraced. Um, 
Brilliant. There are a lot of people who naturally do get worried that to be seen is to be heard uh, in many instances. I, I would say to those people that sometimes when you are working from home, if you're working from home for an employer who hasn't really embraced home working in the past, then that whole mentality of to be seen, to be heard is um, it, it's something that you need to have at the back of your mind uh, in all instances. Um, I don't mic micromanage people, uh, you know, uh, as individuals. If I see that they're not online, I just assume that they're, you know, busy doing other things. I know that my team are always, you know, available when I ask of them. Um, your employer will probably feel the same. There are some employers out there which typically, um, uh, you know, have a less the requirement to micromanage people and there's other employers who you know do absolutely micromanage those individuals um i would say that if you are working for an organization that likes to micromanage then just make sure that you are available um that, you know during the hours that you are there to be available you, yeah, be right. online make sure that if you do have any distractions try and limit yourself from being in front of those distractions yeah. um you know put yourself into a small office if you haven't got a small office uh you know sit in your bedroom you know lock yourself away from it all um it, it's really really difficult and it's really hard to advise anyone what the right thing is to do um you just need to have patience and you need to uh, also have a level of self-motivation to continue um yeah. Thanks for joining us and listening to another episode of our Channel Chat podcast. If you've enjoyed what you've heard and are listening on iTunes, please could you give us a review and subscribe in order to get the newest episodes as soon as they're released. Otherwise, as always, we release an episode every Thursday at midday, so hopefully you can join us then.